Hello, I'm Ranu Jung. I'm a professor of biomedical engineering. I've worked in the area of neuroscience and neurotechnology development for close to three decades. During my time as an academic, I've had the opportunity to collaborate with several industry and clinical partners for neurotechnology development. U.S. federal government agencies have extensively provided non-dilutive funding. We have taken concept design for implantable neurotechnology through multiple steps to obtain investigational device exemption from the FDA for the device and the system developed and initiate a first-in-human clinical trial. I've also launched a small R&D company and successfully obtained funding through the Small Business Innovation Research and Small Business Technology Transfer Programs. In the next set of slides, I will take you through considerations for key decision points as you develop neurotechnology to address a need and move it from concept to the clinic with a distinct goal of commercialization. The rest of the course will elaborate on these decision points. Your goal is to answer four questions. Do I understand what it means to develop technology that meets end user needs? Do I have a strategic plan for the technical, regulatory, reimbursement, and other business needs? Do I understand the different phases along the pathway that I will have to navigate? Have I thought through the different go, no-go decision points that will allow me to traverse my go-to-market plan and have I identified resources that I will need to tap? The nervous system functions by generating patterns of neural activity. These patterns underlie sensation and perception, as well as control of movement, cardiovascular, endocrine, immune, and other functions. Technology can interact with the nervous system to access neural activity patterns, to influence neural activity patterns, or to fundamentally alter the pattern formation mechanisms, that is, promote learning and plasticity. Learning processes, that is, plasticity, are determined by protein expression, the local chemical environment, and neural activity patterns. Thus, as you first develop your neurotechnology, consider what is it that it is targeted for? Will it serve as a diagnostic or as an intervention? Neurosensing technologies are diagnostics, while neuroprostheses and neuromodulation and neurotherapy devices are interventions. Neuroprostheses are technologies that replace lost neural parts or restore lost neural function, and we would want these to be viable over the lifespan. Neuromodulation and neurotherapy technologies control function of the nervous system on a short time scale or over a lifespan. Thus, one must consider what is the time scale over which the neurotechnology must interface and interact with the living body. There are many other items that must be considered. Most importantly, the technology should address the unmet needs for clinical indication or for research advancement. Another key feature is to understand the level of invasiveness that will be required for interfacing with the nervous system. Will it be a wearable or an implantable device? Is your device a completely new device or does it build on existing technologies that are under development or even commercialized? Is your technology well-contained and relatively simple to deploy or is it part of a complex system of components? Answers to such questions will help you plan the scope of your effort and guide you in assembling a team that can address the technical, regulatory, reimbursement, and business considerations necessary for the ultimate deployment of the neurotechnology and for commercial success. You will have to make many decisions along the pathway from idea to delivery. To help make these decisions, this course will cover lectures on stakeholder analysis, regulatory affairs, preclinical studies, clinical trials, funding and reimbursement, and marketing and commercialization. These decisions can be clustered into phases in your go-to-market plan. Phase one is an early stage assessment. It is best conducted prior to investing a lot of time, effort, and funds in the technology development so that you are aware of the required decisions you will have to make, the risks, 
and challenges and so you can make a good strategy to successfully implement a go-to-market plan. This is when you must capture the right user needs. Once you have decided to embark on the development of the neurotechnology, then you start following your strategy through subsequent phases two to four. These phases need not be linear. You must assure that your design plan has sufficient details that your design inputs are well-written and design outputs well-defined. This will help you complete concept creation and feasibility assessment, development of the device, verification that your developed device meets the design inputs and validation that it meets the user needs. The final phase is launching of your device as a product. All along, you must assess if each phase is progressing if you are conducting appropriate go-no-go studies before launching into the next phase, if you have considered conditions that increase risk of failure, and whether you have an executable exit strategy plan in the event you do not want to launch a product yourself. Let us consider a go-to-market plan for a class 3 implantable medical device with an assumption that you have completed phase 1. The timeline for wearables versus implantables is very different, as are the regulatory requirements for safety and efficacy. Getting an implantable medical device to market is a very long process and could take 15 years or more. The device will require an investigational device exemption from the FDA before its safety and efficacy can be evaluated in clinical trials. The IDE application to the FDA must include details for device design and manufacturing, preclinical data from trial in an appropriate animal model, and feasibility clinical test data will be required. Prototype devices used to gather data must be fabricated per the final medical product specifications and manufacturing guidelines. Appropriate facilities that follow good laboratory practices and good manufacturing practices must be utilized. While reviewing your IDE application, the FDA will also evaluate your clinical protocol and the primary and secondary outcomes. IRB approval will be required of the clinical protocol and informed consent documents that include risk and benefit information. Independent external research and clinical monitoring may be required. You will also have to take into consideration several ancillary issues such as insurance, indemnification of OEMs and clinical partners. These can be very challenging for a small company and require considerable financial reserves. Raising capital from investors often depends on the user market and investors may hesitate to offer funding until appropriate de-risking has been achieved. One strategy is to leverage federal funding to move the technology through many of the phases of development and even first in human early feasibility trials in order to de-risk the technology before raising private funding. If you are an academic, you could do several of these steps even before a company is launched. For commercialization of the neurotechnology, a company will be needed. There are several time points along the go-to-market plan that can be considered for an exit, that is, moving the technology developed to such a company. For example, an exit could be completed after an IDE is obtained, after completion of the clinical trials, after pre-market approval, or after reimbursement approval, or perhaps you do not want to exit or transfer to another entity, but you want to lead the company all the way, in which case you should have been building on your phase one early assessments to develop a full business plan. In summary, these are the takeaways. Start thinking early through the entire development, translation and commercialization pathways. Identify the key challenges in technical, regulatory, reimbursement, and business ecosystems so that you can address them as soon as possible. The lectures of this course will take you through the considerations for the key decision points. 
Remember that you must place special emphasis on understanding end user needs and that the voice of the customer is critical. You may want to do an exercise. Consider a neurotechnology you think meets an end user needs for a clinical indication. Develop a plan to do a stakeholder analysis. Do this prior to starting the rest of the course. Complete the course and then come back and redo this again and compare where you were before and after the course. We hope you will enjoy learning the material presented in this course.